name's Mark Hansen. I'm part of the, the team Subnode slash Supermesh, whatever our name is. And uh, I have two other teammates uh, that you know, couldn't be here today, but uh, Jisum Kim and Alex Kozowski. Uh, so let me just run over here and get started. I think we're good. So we, we're looking at a particular st uh, statistic in New York City and, and just issues around the world of internet accessibility um, and reliability. Um, and so for New York City specifically, uh, a fifth of the city doesn't have reliable internet at home, right? So how can we think about the digital tools that we use every day um, for collaboration um, and, and how these communities can use these? So our, our solution simply is subnodes, which is a, a modification of a Raspberry Pi. So right now I have a subnodes running on my phone. Oh, not on my phone. I have a subnodes running on my Raspberry Pi. And typically we use apps on our phones that connect to the internet, and then we al that allows us to connect to other users. But in this case, what if we put this chat app, this collaboration app on a Raspberry Pi, and it could be mobile. So let's just run through a qu quick example. Uh, let's say you're a community organizer, um, and you're trying to get together to decide how your participatory budgeting um, amount should be spent. Uh, if you're the organizer, you go to a room, there's 100 people there, maybe 20 uh, points that you want to be discussing on. Um, you simply plug in this device, and it will broadcast a wireless network. In this case, the organizer set it as participatory budgeting app. Uh, w upon uh, that being broadcasted, people in the room can then see that connect. And here we have uh, two individuals using this. So it allows an organizer to easily uh, modify the app for their particular circumstance um, and then deploy it wherever that's uh, required. So here we can see users uh, signing in, writing messages, voting on particular items. It's collaboration on a large scale that wouldn't be a possible um, without a digital tool. Um, for communities that don't have the internet. So it's one, one thing that, to note is that this really isn't just about participatory budgeting. It's really about how can we deploy an app or a web app experience uh, anywhere. So why not put these in parks and get information about the events coming up? Uh, why not put these in abandoned lots and let people put in suggestions on what should be there? Why not put these in subway cars and have an MTA navigation app so when you don't have internet you still know which routes to take? We're not all these things, just kind of re a reconfigurable system. And the, the spawning idea actually was about Syrian uh, refugee camps and, and other cities um, that faced issues of internet reliability. How can we think about the, um, the New York City apps that we're developing for maybe service centers that could help run those organizations um, and put them in other places? Uh, this is a picture of Constitution Chile, whose uh, infrastructure was destroyed during an earthquake. Um, and thousands of residents came to the city center to decide on how they should be rebuilding their city. How can you facilitate that conversation? This is a picture from an, uh, a rally in Hong Kong when the government had shut down the internet, and protesters were forced to look to mesh networks to be able to uh, establish connection with each other. Now, this is a fairly complex process that we've abstracted away. So this is uh, all that's required, Raspberry Pi, Wi-Fi dongle and plugging it into a wall, and a micro SD card that has our, uh, our program on it. So when you've plugged it into the wall, or in this case plugged it into a battery pack, um, you can actually go to this right now. If you go on your phone, you can see subnodes 2381, I think. Uh, I disabled the button so you don't reboot it on everyone. Uh, but the first app that you, you would have seen would have been that participatory budgeting app. Since there was nothing there, you were able to move into the dashboard. This allows you to load up a, an app of your choice, um, either right from uh, what we want to have as a preloaded set of, of apps, or uh, if you have an extra Wi-Fi dongle, you can connect to the Wi-Fi that's available, uh, pull something from GitHub, and it will install it to port 80 so other people um, going to the, the wireless network are automatically redirected. Here we have some network uh, configuration, <laughs> garbly gook. <laughs> Uh, there's an option menu that you can use to uh, change the network name um, and do some other modifications such as enable mesh networking. Um, and then finally, you can reboot it uh, to make sure that you, know, you get the proper update. So that was just a quick picture of it updating. Thank you for listening. Hope you enjoyed. <laughs> Any questions?